Hello, Sooner Nation, OU Insider subscribers, Coach Brian Clinton enthusiasts, people who are surprised or at the very least have a lot of thoughts and reactions from this OU Texas softball weekend series. We have been here in Austin all weekend and we are recording this just about an hour or so after a two to one loss for Oklahoma to Texas, basically a repeat of Saturday's game. They lost Saturday two to one. They lose today two to one. It marks their first conference series loss since 2011. It marks their first loss, their series loss to Texas since 2009. Brian, I mean, no team obviously is unbeatable. Patty even said both today and yesterday that they're, they've been prepared for this. They knew something like this could happen. But still, I think even after yesterday's loss, we kind of expected you went through the numbers that Oklahoma would bounce back, find a way to bounce back and win today. And you know what? I have to give Texas credit. They found a way to win. But what was your takeaway from today's game? Yeah, it just kind of how Patty said, it was, it was a repeat of yesterday. It, it did feel almost identical to what we saw uh, yesterday. And I was really, it, it felt as if Texas figured something out where Oklahoma just couldn't get the, they couldn't square up on the ball. And that's been something, you know, we, we saw a little bit of a lull offensively to begin the year. And then this team kind of caught fire offensively and we saw the bats get really hot. But this was the first weekend that we saw the bats consistently be cold, and and Texas almost seemed like they were one step ahead of the Sooners. And I need to I, I need to give the Texas fan base credit for uh, the atmosphere because this was the first time, at least since I've followed uh, or, or 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 helped cover Oklahoma softball, this was truly a, a rattling environment at times. Uh, whether it was the the, the horn. Uh, going on out back uh, with the outfielders or just any time something big happened uh, for the Longhorns. It was loud here, and, and you could tell it was shaking up the home. No, and Patty actually mentioned that after the game. She said she loved how loud the crowd got. It was hostile. It was genuinely hostile. Yes. OU hasn't really faced that, especially like this, in a long time. But you mentioned it, man. There, there's a lot of ways to break down this game and this weekend, but really the story is OU's offense. They scored seven runs this weekend. That is their lowest in a conference series. Or actually, I think in a weekend series at all since 2012. Wow. And really today specifically, Ella Parker got things started in the third inning with that leadoff home run. You thought, okay, there it is, right? There's the mm -hmm. spark. That's going to get things going. But really what you saw even the rest of that inning was missed opportunities, and that was kind of the theme for this weekend. Ella yeah. Parker gets the, the leadoff. Tiari Jennings and Jada Coleman both get on base, but they both get stranded there. And they were both yep. on base with just one out. Mm -hmm. Oh, you can't bring those runs in. And then I think over the next four innings, over the last four innings, oh, you only had two hits. Yep. You have to give credit to this Texas pitching staff for what they were able to do all weekend, especially today. But, Brian, going back to, I mean, one run yesterday, one run today, not that yesterday was a flu, not that anybody would have said that, mm -hmm. but considering – Yesterday and today were kind of a similar offensive performance where outside of a couple of hits, the offense wasn't there. The timely clutch hits that we're used to seeing from Oklahoma just weren't there. Yep. Is there a panic level? Is there a concern level? Is there anything that's dire that OU needs to fix? Or do you kind of have to just credit, give credit to Texas pitching staff? I'm not ready to panic. I, I do think there is some concern offensively, just considering that it is a trend at this point. Um, but again, this is the middle of the season. We're still early April. We're still a long way to go before the road to Oklahoma City really starts. So I think that there's still plenty of time for the Sooners to turn things around. But, yes, you do need to give credit to Texas. This is a team that we've talked about since the preseason. With what they returned from last year, that group of freshmen that really started to, to play well down the stretch last year, uh, they pushed Tennessee for a little bit there, uh, ended up losing the Super Regional last year. But we knew this team was going to be dangerous. And they showed it this week. Uh, it wasn't, and it, you know, the, the offensive firepower wasn't there from either team. But I think we really saw what Texas is able to do in the circle. Uh, and so I got to give credit credit to Texas where it's due. But you really could tell the Sooner batters they they were they were very frustrated. No, you, uh, you, they was, really were. You could see any time, lots of flyouts this weekend, and you could see the head drop, the body language, the bat toss. Uh, being frustrated about it on their way back to the dugout. Several uh, several girls, you know, Riley Boone's one that sticks out several times. She's very animated to begin with, but we saw that from her. We saw that from Jada Coleman. These big 
time situation batters for Oklahoma just didn't come through in the clutch this week, and and, it, and it, honestly, that's that's really what hurt them. So uh, you can't leave you can't leave them on base, especially whenever you have a, a team like Texas on the other side. So well, and I wanted to mention something that I don't think is going to get talked a lot about, but I was kind of curious coming into the weekend, and I think I mentioned this that. OU led the Big 12 or leads the Big 12 in walks, especially coming into the weekend. They were averaging over six a game. This Texas pitching staff was best in the conference at not allowing walks. They had allowed fewer walks than any other team in the conference. What do we see this weekend? OU was walked six times total the entire weekend. No walks yesterday, only three today. They were averaging over six a game, only had six the entire weekend series. Yeah. I think there is something there to Texas. They weren't giving OU easy they weren't giving OU easy free bases. They right. were making OU earn it and credit to Texas. Yeah. I think the other thing to really look at, Brian, is with OU's pitching staff, it was pretty interesting. Kelly Maxwell obviously got the start on Friday and was pretty much flawless. Yes. On Saturday, Nicole May predictably got the start. That's the way they've been doing things, but Nicole May yesterday after five innings, it's Kirsten Deal coming into reliever. Mm-hmm. Peyton Monticelli came in for a little bit. Carly Keeney came in for a little bit. But that all begged the question, is Kelly Maxwell going to get the ball again on Sunday? She got the ball again yeah, today. She did. And I think, she, I mean, she was really good, especially to start this game. I think just, I mean, six strikeouts through the first three innings. But they break Texas breaks through with that two-run home run in the fourth inning. Mm-hmm. Kirsten Deal came, comes in in the fifth. I thought did a pretty good job coming in as a relief pitcher. But... I'm curious, Brian. I was going to ask you. I think we've this. Is, it's clear Kelly Maxwell is the ace for this team, yes. and it seems to me that when push comes to shove, you, you mentioned there's a long way to, of season to go. But oh, you wanted this one, yes. And what did oh you do? They go to Kelly Maxwell again. Is that probably what we should expect moving forward? That when things are going tough, they're going to ride Kelly Maxwell in the circle. Yeah, until somebody else shows that they can come in and really control a game, I, I would say that's absolutely what you're going to see, Maxwell. When she's controlling the zone, there's really not very many pitchers, if any, out there uh, that, that have the kind of control of the game that she does. But uh, we did see some things. I was encouraged from what I saw with Kirsten Deal today. I mm-hmm. thought that that was uh, really big for her, especially in the moment. Uh, just it, it, You come in with a, a, a at a deficit and in a hostile environment, and she, and she looked pretty, pretty good. So, uh, yeah, I would expect Maxwell to be – uh, ace uh, material for the Sooners going forward. Um, I, I thought I thought yesterday, I thought Saturday, uh, what we saw from Nicole May was it was an, it was again an up and down performance, um, but she did seem to be a little more comfortable uh, in a hostile environment than I expected her to be. So I thought that, that was good stuff. But yeah, as far as the uh, the ace goes, who's going to lead this cir- uh, team in the circle? It's definitely going to be Maxwell until further notice. Yeah, absolutely. And look, here's the thing for OU. As, as much as it feels like this was an unexpected result in some ways, they're still 35-3. and three. Look, they're still they're still atop the Big 12. Yeah. Um, there's still so much of this season left to go. Um, this is a really good Texas team, number yes. four in the country. Really good Texas team. And I think some people were wondering what happened when they lost to Oklahoma State that series week, last weekend. I think that shows Oklahoma State is for yes. real, too. Absolutely. So now you project moving forward. Obviously, Oklahoma is the favorite this weekend or to win another national championship. This weekend doesn't change that. But heading into this upcoming week, over these next few games, I think for me personally, Brian, and I want to ask you, but for me, I'm particularly curious to see how they handle the pitching rotation. But I think the biggest thing is what do we see from this offense and how do we see what do we see from the response of this team that is this isn't just one game. This is a lost weekend series, mm-hmm. something that OU hasn't experienced in over a decade. Yeah. What are you looking for these next few days as OU in in some ways has their first real bit of adversity in quite some time? You know, it's it's one of those things where We've talked about this at length at times, uh, both on air, on camera and off camera, that Patty Gasso, this season in particular, it's incredibly important for them to be looking towards what 2025 looks like. Mm -hmm. And I I think it's important to understand a lot of the young players that got some uh, they got some opportunities uh, in in this in this series. Obviously, you you saw what Ella Parker did. Cassidy Pickering also uh, she played a vital role in, in this week, and, and she has it for this team all year. But I'm curious to see what JT Gasso can do with this film because I know 
that they're going to go back to Norman. And this is going, you know, not that there's any lack of focus with this team ever. That That's why Oklahoma is who they are in a Patty Gasso. But having something like a weekend series loss to go off of is going to be something that this team, it's going to do one of two things. It's either going to galvanize them, which we've seen happen a lot of times in the past, and this team gets better from that, or you're going to see maybe some other teams start to use that same that same uh, approach and see if it starts giving Oklahoma some more problems down the road. Um, this week's going to be big. It's going to be uh, very, very interesting to see how Oklahoma comes out next week and, and uh, if that offense is, is a little more aggressive than they were. I noticed something, and I wanted to ask you this. It seemed as if they were almost sitting on pitches today on the first pitch rather than being aggressive like they were last, yesterday. Um, do you think that was a concerted effort from the entire group, or do you think that that was just them maybe feeling the pressure that Texas was was feeling this this series behind their their home crowd? No, that's a good observation. I do. I mean, I think talking to Patty and the players yesterday, they made it clear that they needed to make adjustments, mm-hmm. um, and I think that was an adjustment they tried to make. But also after today's game, Alyssa Brito actually said, "I think we should have stayed within ourselves more." Mm-hmm. So I think the reality is, oh, you made some real adjustments at the plate today, yeah. and not only were they not particularly effective, but I think it goes again to give credit to Texas. I think Texas really got to this OU team this weekend. Now, is there any reason to believe OU won't bounce back? Is there any reason to think the offense won't be incredible the rest of the way? No. But I think it did show Texas had the advantage this weekend in the circle defensively, and I do think they had OU's offense a little bit on their heels, and it is pretty interesting to see back-to-back games where OU's offense kind of just looked a little flustered. So it is kind of be curious to see what is that balance between it's a tough two-game series. You can't just keep doing what you're doing, but how do you not make too many adjustments right. and, and, and become something that's not yourself? Right, right. Well, um, I think the big thing that I am take away from this series, like the overarching thought, is this team in Austin, the team in Stillwater, and obviously that team in Norman, I would not be surprised if any of that trio is the last team standing at the end of the season. No. Um, these three teams almost assuredly will be in Oklahoma City, and I expect them to be teams that play late into that tournament. So, um, yeah, this, this, this Texas team's for real, and uh, Oklahoma's got to pick itself up for the first time since 2011. So it'll be interesting to see how, the, how things go for them. Well, it was an interesting uh, weekend for us here in Austin. It was an interesting weekend for OU softball, for Texas softball, and now we'll see what happens over the next few days. But uh, – We'll have plenty of content for you over at the OU Insider YouTube channel. We'll have tons of content over at OUinsider.com from not only this weekend and from today's game, but OU softball moving forward. Until next time, we'll see you then.